a man who started coaching the NBA and his first year coaching he won a title with the Los Angeles Lakers something that Tom Thibodeau couldn't do with Derrick Rose this year he went on to coach the Bulls Loyola Marymount where I remember watching those teams and I love yeah. seeing them those guys put up, up and down the court up and down the court he influenced my fun. coaching style when I coached the girls this year there was just man to man D and just go coached the Nuggets George Mason he was a co- assistant coach with Orlando he won a title in the WNBA with the Phoenix Mercury and now he's coaching women's basketball at the University of Oregon. Paul Weston, how you doing, Paul? Oh, I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Great. Good. What do you think what's going on with these NBA finals here with the Heat and uh, the Mavericks? Well, I think it's uh, been exciting. Uh, I'm living out in the West Coast now, so I've been following you know the, the Dallas Mavericks and their run. I think it's been terrific. Uh, I guess the big question is, can Dirk hold up? Uh, but, uh, you know, I think it's been great for basketball. We have two teams that... Uh, you know, are going to make an exciting final series. So what happened to the Lakers? Yeah, I, you know, they, they they acted like they were tired. They acted like they were, you know, expecting good things to happen, and uh, Dallas just uh, took it away from them. Uh, I think that what surprised them was that Dallas's uh, defensive ability. I don't think anyone uh, thought that they were that good on the defensive end. We had on last week Gail Goodrich, and Gail Goodrich had some concerns about the new Laker coach, Mike Brown, saying, you know what, he's a defensive coach, and then being a Lakers coach, it's about offense. It's about showtime, and he doesn't know if he's going to fit in there. Well, you know, uh, I mean, Mike Brown thinks he's a good fit. He's a terrific uh, defensive coach, but it's like anything else in basketball. Uh, you can get good defense if, if your players are going willing to dig in and do it. I mean, defense is... Uh, uh, you know, 80% effort and, you know, 20% technique. So uh, they're going to have to step up and, and do the things that uh, Mike Brown would want them to do. But uh, they're an older team, and, uh, and uh, you know, that's why I come back to Dallas. Uh, I, I would never have thought Dallas would have gotten this far, that they were just going to slide on out maybe round one or round two, and, uh, you know, people forget about them, but uh, they wouldn't allow that to happen. It didn't look like in Game 1 that uh, Dirk Nowitzki was going to be this dominant force that he was in the Western Conference Finals. Do you think Miami has the defense to, to contain him for an entire series? Yeah, I think they're, they're, you know, they're quicker. I mean, although you know, Oklahoma City had, had good quickness. Uh, you know, this is Nowitzki's big challenge. You know, he, he's, he's gotten teams this far in the past, and ironically against Miami. Uh, is he going to be strong enough uh, and uh, tough enough? And, of course, with his uh, finger injury, that, that kind of might set him back a little bit. But I think he's going to be uh, fine. I think uh, he and LeBron are kind of a match-off. Like, they're, they're going to kind of equalize each other out. What was it like coaching the Lakers when you had Magic and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Jamal Wilkes? I mean, it had to be really fun. Yeah, well, I mean, it was fun. I mean, it was kind of a new experience for me. I stumbled into a group of great players and uh, kind of just let them go. I uh, uh, I kind of think uh, back then I was a little bit like Eric Spolstra. You know, I was uh, handed a group of great players and uh, they found a way to win and uh, I didn't get in their way and, uh, you know, they, they just pulled it off. You know, winning that first season, do you say, hey, this isn't so tough after all? <laughs> well, uh, you know, when you stumble into it, you say, well, this is kind of fun and easy and then, uh, you know, 28 years later, before I was able to win a championship in the WNBA, I realized how hard championships are. They, they don't come easy. Uh, so when, when you're right there in the finals like uh, both teams are, it's a, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Uh, and uh, and it's, it's going to be a tough series. I, I had a guess. Um, I want to say Dallas, but I'm, I'm worried about Nowitzki's injury. So you win a title with the Lakers, and then you win a title in the WNBA, and you get a cereal box for the WNBA. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it's always good to get a Wheaties box. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, it was kind of fun that uh, we, we had that done to us. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's exciting. I, I love the women's game. Uh, you know, I, I, I never coached before until I went to the WNBA, and I didn't know what to expect. But I can tell you, they're tough, hard, talented players. Uh, they're, they're better than I think the basketball world uh, thinks. What's the difference, or is there a difference, between coaching male and female basketball players? Uh, well, uh, uh, a good friend of mine, when I first took this job, said uh, the difference is that men need to win in order to feel good, and women 
need to feel good in order to win. So a lot of it's in the preparation. If you can get a group of young women to, to work together and play together, they're going to do very well. Guys, on the other hand, they got to win 10, 15, 20, 30 games in order to say, hey, I think we have a good team. Did you run the same offense with the women as you did at Loyola Marymount? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I've been... I did the same thing, you know, uh, ever since my, you know, my Laker days and uh, Loyola and Marymount, we, we added full court press defense, which kind of, you know, elevated the break because we just got so many more possessions. But yeah, I've been doing the same thing for, for a lot of years and I'm doing it now at the University of Oregon with the women. Are you surprised that nobody f- sort of follows that pattern? Uh, yes and no. I mean, uh, the, the pattern can, can get you a lot of wins, uh, but the pattern can get you fired. Uh, because uh, it's not easy, and if you can't get players uh, to do it, you know, over and over and over again, uh, it'll break down. What is the concept behind it? Concept is a real simple one. Uh, get the ball, run the ball as fast as you can down court, beat the defense before they get set, and take open looks and open shots before they're digging in on you, and get all the offensive rebounds you want because they're not ready to block you out. I'm coaching. They came to me this year. I've never coached before to coach the fourth and fifth grade girls team in my kids' grade school. I don't even have a fourth or fifth grader. So the first practice, I looked at the girls. I said, you're playing man-to-man D. You get the ball and just go. Just go to the basket. And I had parents come up to me saying, well, why aren't you running plays? We got plays. We got plays. I said, because these are fourth and fifth graders. They're not going to understand it. And we had the smallest team in the league. We went nine and three. And other coaches looked. And they were grabbing my kids' jerseys to slow them down. And I said, it's simple. Just get the ball and get shots. But Coaches are running the triangle offense with fourth and fifth grade girls. <laughs> I think you're on the right track. Uh, it's, it's as simple as that. The, the difficulty, and apparently you had success if you're getting the young girls, the young women, or men at all ages to run that hard, because once they start slowing down, then you need plays. Now, uh, Shaquille O'Neal, whom you may be familiar with, right. recently, uh, the, the other yesterday, said he's retiring. Any thoughts uh on the big Aristotle? Well, you know, uh, it's interesting. I, I ran into Shaquille O'Neal when I was at Loyola Marymount. We played LSU in an overtime game down there, and the final score, I think, was like 145-141. And Shaquille was like a, a thin, angular, you know, on, I wouldn't say beanpole, but, man, he, he could run like the wind. And, uh uh, that, that's my memory of him. I said, this young fellow is going to be a good player. And then, and obviously he turned into a, a, a monster player. And, uh, you know, I, I woe his uh, departure, but uh, he's, had, he's had a great run. What do you think about Scottie Pippen's comments saying that LeBron is the best player ever, kind of dishing Jordan, and then Kareem comes out and says, no, the best player ever was Wilt. And then he said, if it wasn't Wilt, it was Russell with the championships. Who would you say the best player ever was? Uh... I have no doubt the best player that I've seen in my career is uh, Michael Jordan. Uh, uh, I have no doubt about that. Uh, LeBron still hasn't uh, pulled it off. He still hasn't proven uh, that he is anywhere better than Michael or, or his match. You have to win championships uh, to be you know, the best player of all time. Uh, Michael Jordan's right there uh, as the very best. So if LeBron wins six championships to, and Michael has six championships? Call me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I would say if they're even up in championships, uh, when in doubt, go with Mike. Michael seemed like he had the mentality LeBron doesn't have. Michael just wanted to win, and LeBron seems more laid back, doesn't have that fire. Well, it looks like he's getting there. I mean, I, I give him credit. He, he, he's changed over the last three, four years. Uh, so uh, LeBron is growing in that world. But, you know, Michael Jordan just, you know, he just took the ball when he had to make a basket. He had that look in his eye, and you know he was going to deliver. Uh, I, as again, I don't think there's anyone ever better. Yeah, no. But you can, it looks like you can visibly see the difference with LeBron because he does look like he's more serious about it. And from an ability standpoint, I'm tempted to say LeBron, with his size, you know, could outrank Jordan. Well, uh, obviously others agree with you, but, uh, you know, uh, I'll, still, uh, I'll still stay with Michael Jordan. Well, did you ever 
regret not getting the chance to coach in the NBA really again after being a head coach after the Bulls? Uh, well, I did go back. I, you know, I went to LMU, uh, was in Loyola for five years, and I went back and coached the Nuggets for, for two years. So I, I did have an opportunity to go back as a head coach. Uh, and then, you know, I kind of went all different places and went back to college. Uh, actually went over and coached in Japan for two years, which was a, was a nice experience. Uh, uh, I went into the ABA for a few years and was an assistant at uh, at Orlando, and then I went with the Seattle Supersonics, uh, and then down to Oklahoma City for their their first season. So, uh, uh, you know, I I have no regrets. I had had a nice run uh, on on all levels, but I'm happy being back coaching the women at Oregon now. Uh, it's, it's a it's a fun game, and, and it's a it's a real challenge. Now, how did you end up at Oregon? Well, I had a friend who who was the AD up there and said, uh, "Would you think of coming back and coaching women?" Uh, a fellow named Pat Kilkenny, who was, who uh, kind of asked me to come up and see what 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 I thought. And uh, uh, after visiting the University of Oregon and seeing uh, their their facilities, and uh, I said, "Yeah, I think I want to do this." So I'm glad I did. With with the Miami Heat, there's been a lot of speculation that Pat Riley's actually coaching the team. Through their head coach, do you think that's true? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Pat's a, uh, a very smart administrator. Uh, he knows uh, how to keep a, a good, comfortable distance. I think uh, Eric Spolstra has weathered the storm. Uh, you know, early in the season when it looked like there was all kinds of confusion and chaos and disruption. Uh, he's done a very good job keeping his composure, and, uh, and I think uh, he is doing the job and I think deserves all that credit. From an X is an O standpoint, is it that much of a difference between a Pat Riley and somebody else? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I mean, I, it's hard to make those distinctions. I mean, all of the great coaches, uh, you know, going back to, you know, anytime you win a championship, I mean, you have to be doing a good job. I mean, you have to have a good scheme and a good plan. Uh, but, you know, it's your players that are going to carry you. Uh, and, uh, you know, even this year uh, in, in this final series, uh, uh, the players uh, as a group, you know, Miami has the more talent. Uh, you know, I, I try and match people up, and I don't know who matches up with Dwayne Wade. I, I, think, I think he's the X factor. Yeah, he's going to be the difference. I talked to Dick Mata the other day, and Dick Mata says he hasn't watched one game this season. He doesn't like the way these offenses are run nowadays. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. I, when I first started out, Dick Mata was uh, with the Washington Bullets, and uh, he was always tough to play against. He had, he had all kinds of schemes. You never knew what was going to happen uh, when you played a Mata team. Uh, but, you know, I, no, I enjoy it. I enjoy the NBA. I think it's kind of picked up in the last couple of years, and uh, to the credit of you know Miami, and I think uh, LeBron and Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. Uh, that experiment looks like it's working. I think people have uh, interest in the game because of, of of their play. And and of course, if you're a traditional player, you like Dirk Nowitzki, and and you hope that he finally pulls one off. So I I think the game has has improved. Now recently, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has been in the news not just for his assessment of Scottie Pippen's assessment, but also for the fact that. Uh, a statue out sta- outside Staples Arena, you know, there's, he looks around and he doesn't see one. What, what do you make of that? Well, uh, I think Kareem, you know, uh, should have a statue out there. I mean, he, he will, he's monumental in the, in the Laker uh, uh, trist- uh, uh, tradition and, and culture. Um, so I think he's well-deserving. I, I don't know about all the play, the comments back and forth, but uh, in my evaluation, Kareem was one of the greatest players in the game and certainly, you know, one of the, the best uh, Laker players ever. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, my vote is to put a statue up and cut out the controversy and, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't make anyone look good when you kind of go back well, and forth like that. No, but there had to be something going on behind the scenes for him not to have a statue already because... As you say, he he is one of the monumental players in that franchise's long illustrious history. So, so it's it's not a case of Kareem being overly sensitive. It's a a question of what happened. Yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't be uh, privy to any of that. But I, uh, as I say, just 
having coached him, having uh, observed him, you know, over the years, I mean, uh, he's he's a monumental basketball player, you know, from from Tower Memorial to UCLA to the Los Angeles Lakers with a couple stops in Milwaukee. So, uh, you know, uh, Kareem uh, is deserving of uh, uh, whatever honor uh, he should get, and that, that certainly should be one of them. I think part of the problem is it was basically Magic's team. Magic's known for the Lakers. Magic was coach of the Lakers, part owner of the Lakers. Basically, the Lakers are Magic Johnson, and kind of like with Scottie Pippen with the Bulls. The Bulls are Michael Jordan, and it's kind of hard because they're taking a back seat, and I don't think they like it. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have a sense for that, but I, I do know that uh, in both cases, uh, you know, Pippen was a great uh, sidekick for Michael Jordan. He sure helped them win championships. And uh, in the Lakers' case, uh, Kareem, especially when I was there, uh, it was, they were co-great players. I mean, uh, I don't think I know in my my first year we would not have won without Kareem, even though we won last the last game without Kareem when Magic scored 42 points and played center. But uh, they were equal uh, participants in, in in that championship. Should we hold out hope that someday an NBA team will adopt your offensive scheme and uh, be running up and down the court the way things used to be, like say, in, even in the ABA? Well, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hold on too long. That, that could take a long time. The, the team that that over the last ten years uh, ran as well as I've ever seen, uh, not necessarily my style, was uh, when Mike D'Antoni was uh, in Phoenix. I mean, I thought that was the best fast break basketball I had seen in a long, long time. Uh, I think Dan Tony uh, should have gotten uh, more credit than he did. Everyone said, oh, well, he, he can't win playing that way. But he sure rattled a lot of cages. He sure got close enough, and well, it was only a, some terrific San Antonio teams that finally put them down. Thank you very much, Paul. It was a pleasure talking to you. We got Frank Layden, and you know Frank Layden. You can't... Yeah, tell him I said hi. He's an old friend. Thank you very much, Paul, and good luck with the Oregon basketball team. Thank you. Bye now.